Hello, and welcome to Community Engagement, Solidarity, and Citizenship. I am Armin Rose, and I will be your guide as we go through the concepts of this course. This is Part 7, Methodologies and Approaches of Community Actions and Involvements Across Disciplines. There are seven methodologies and approaches. We have partnership building with local groups, community profiling, needs assessment, working with core group of leaders or leadership development and participatory action planning, resource mobilization, social action, and evaluation. Let us start with partnership building. Community partnerships can be as diverse and varied as the communities in which they are located and the issues they are formed to tackle. Some may be ad hoc committees formed to quickly respond to a discrete community issue and can be disbanded as quickly as they form. Others form to take on larger projects, developing structures by which they operate and creating comprehensive strategies to advance their goals. The Community Profile Community profiling involves building up a picture of the nature, needs, and resources of a community with the active participation of that community. It is a useful first stage in any community planning process to establish a context which is widely agreed. A range of methods are used to enable the community to develop an understanding of itself. Collecting and presenting data the methods to collect data from the community combine group work and group interaction techniques with data collection and presentation techniques. The focus is on methods which are visual in order to generate interest and make the process accessible to the illiterate and those unused to verbal communication. The community profile presentation must be understood even without explanation by those who cannot read or do not want to. Therefore, it should be a mostly visual tool in the form of a poster, booklet, pamphlet, flyer, or slideshow with only important words and numbers included. A comprehensive community profile has several components categorized into six major parts, demography, economy, accessibility, security, social services, and culture. Here is an example of a community profile focusing on the economic components of the community. Here is another example showing demography and accessibility of the community. The next method in community action is needs assessment. Needs assessment is a systematic process for determining and addressing needs or gaps between current conditions and desired conditions or wants. The discrepancy between the current condition and wanted condition must be measured to appropriately identify the need. This is an example of a needs assessment. It contains the goal, the present situation, the ideal situation, the needs, the required actions and solutions, and the required resources, person, or budget, and the potential problems to be encountered. The next approach is leadership development. Leadership development is any activity designed to improve a person's competency as a leader. Prescribed leaders are those who are given the role of a leader by a higher authority. An emergent leader is an individual who has worked their way up into leadership by gaining respect and support from the group. Identifying potential leaders in a community is essential to the success of the projects. There is really no one set of characteristics that make a person a good leader. But these cluster of traits, in combination with each other, show distinctive leadership qualities. These traits are capacity, achievement, responsibility, participation, status, and situation. 
Leadership qualities under capacity include intelligence, alertness, verbal facility, originality, and judgment. Under achievement, we have scholarship, knowledge, and accomplishments. Under responsibility, we have dependability, initiative, persistence, aggressiveness, self-confidence, and a desire to excel. Under participation, activity, sociability, cooperation, adaptability, and humor. Under status, we have socioeconomic position and popularity. And situation, we have mental ability, skills, needs and interests of followers, objectives to be achieved, and tasks to be performed. The next approach is action planning. An action plan is a checklist for the steps or tasks you need to complete in order to achieve the goals you have set. It is an essential part of the strategic planning process and helps with improving teamwork planning. Components of an action plan include a well-defined description of the goal to be achieved, tasks or steps that need to be carried out to reach the goal, people who will be in charge of carrying out each task, when will these tasks be completed in the form of deadlines and milestones? Resources needed to complete the tasks and measures to evaluate progress. How to write an action plan. Step one, define your end goal. Step two, list down the steps to be followed. Step three, prioritize tasks and add deadlines. Step four, Set milestones. Step five, identify the resources needed. Step six, visualize your action plan. And step seven, monitor, evaluate, and update. A SMART goal must be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. This is an example of a SMART goal. I will obtain a job as a high school English teacher within three months after graduating with my Bachelor of Science in Education and passing the licensure examination for teachers. As you can see, it is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. This is the format of an action plan. It contains the title of the subject, the goal described as the SMART goal, the action description, the person responsible, the start and end date, required resources, potential problems, and expected outcome. You can add as many rows as there are actions to achieve your goals. The next approach is resource mobilization. Resource mobilization refers to all activities involved in securing new and additional resources for the community or project. It also involves making better use of and maximizing existing resources. The next approach is social action. Social action is about people coming together to help improve their lives and solve the problems that are important in their communities. It involves people giving their time and other resources for the common good in a range of forms, from volunteering and community-owned services to community organizing and simple neighborly acts. The next approach is evaluation. Evaluation involves the development and implementation of a plan to assess your program in a systematic way through quantitative and qualitative measures. Evaluation is a form of action research that seeks to provide information that is useful for program development and improvement, program replication, resource allocation, and policy decisions. Evaluation is an ongoing process. You decide what you need to do, collect data, and review and learn from that data. Then you adjust your program and your data collection. You collect more data 
and so on. It is a cycle. A good evaluation plan, especially one that is developed early in the life of the program, will help your program run more smoothly and sustainably increase the likelihood that you will be able to demonstrate its impact. The images and pictures used in this presentation belong to their owners. The ideas presented in this video are based on the most essential learning competencies of the Department of Education. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.